morning, good morning. I am so thankful that you are here with us today. We are here with a powerful message. We're on our part three of Teach Them How to Love. And we are joining you in agreement that today is a day that God has made for you. And he's going to take care of you today. He's going to rest in you today because Jesus wants us to have a Sabbath. So today is our Sabbath day where we get a rest. We get to be in peace. We get to have our friends and our family come around us and love on us. And we get to be in worship with you, Lord. So thank you, God, for who you are. Thank you for Hannah and her worship today, Lord. We call on your name. We call and ask that you rain down on us, Lord. Let your Holy Spirit fire rain in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah, you can join me in singing this song. Today, we are here with a power. It's Amen. Facebook, sorry. No problem. I was just going to say, you can join me in singing this song called Waymaker. If you know it, if you don't know it, you can still sing along. You can look it up. The lyrics are all over. But God, we focus on you right now. We set our eyes on you, our powerful, amazing, loving, faithful God. We are so blessed to be your children, to hold on to your promises, and to see you do your miracles in our lives. And so God, we do pray as Amber prayed that you would just rain down during this song and throughout the whole message and throughout the whole day, throughout our whole lives, God, that we would keep our eyes on you and trust in your miracles. Thank you, God. We worship you in all circumstances. In all circumstances, let us be full of your joy and your hope. You are here, moving in my midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, looking in this place. I worship you. I worship you. Let's sing that again. You are here, moving in our midst. I worship. I worship you, 
never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I feel your presence, Lord God. And I just thank you for the gift that Hannah gave us today, using her gift and her talent, Lord, to worship you. Such a beautiful thing. And as I come into a time of giving, I did have a similar scripture to the gift and the love that comes from ushering in the presence of the great. And this is Proverbs 18, 16. A gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. I like that it says a gift. It, it could be any kind of gift. Um, I particularly have been thinking about how much I want to buy a house, but you know, in this market, it's hard. Um, but I all, I'm in my small condo, my thousand foot condo. I've been ushering in a gift for people to come over to my house and have baby showers or have birthdays of people who don't have a place that they feel comfortable in to have people over so I've been trying to keep my door open because it says that it will it opens right I'm keeping my door open so that I can usher in a, a gift for, for me too because I think God is testing everything that we have currently he's like well I gave you a house what are you doing with it are you using it for a gift to others are you using it for yourself? And so I've been trying to just make sure that I'm thinking about all the gifts that I currently have and how I can use those gifts for other people and not just for myself. And so 
I've been praying a lot about building in community and finding people who want to build in community and who want to come together and worship God and, and, you know, talk about our problems together and be able to pray about those things. And I do that every Wednesday here at Healing Life Church. Um, but I'd like to invite more people to come and join us in ushering in the Holy Spirit. And I'm asking that you give me a gift of your presence because that would be an amazing gift to me. And I know that when we open the way with our gift, even if it's the gift of your presence, that the giver will usher in the presence of the Lord. And so I just thank you, God, that you are a God that if we just make a move and open a door, even if it's in Hannah coming here and worshiping and sharing her gift with us, Lord, I feel the presence of God. I helped my neighbor with his plumbing issue because I already had a plumber and I already knew like the building and he just moved in and he gave me a hundred dollar gift card because he said, Amber, you made my job so much easier. And I don't even know what I did. I think I just opened a door and said, I'm willing to help you. Yes, I will take your key and help the plumber get into your house when you're gone because I will be here. And he, and I just felt like that's the simple things you can do. And guess what? You give and you receive back. And I heard that in the scripture. If you open the way, something will come back. You open the door, something will come back. And what will come back? It's a pretty cool gift. I mean, the presence of the great will come back <laughs> if you just open the door. So I'm just going to ask today, Heavenly Father, we're opening up our door right now and saying, people who are hearing my voice come into community with us, share the presence of a gift to us with your presence. We want to see you. We want to build community with you. We want to love you. We want to build friendships with people who want to know Jesus. And I promise you, the word never fails us that there will be an usher that will bring the Holy Spirit. And so I'm ushering in the Holy Spirit today. Heavenly Father, thank you for your spirit. Thank you that your spirit is clearly here, that you remind me each and every day that no matter how distant I feel from you, you show up just to show me I'm not distant. I'm right here. I am right here. And that's such a special thing. So Lord, I just ask that we all open a door today and allow your spirit to be ushered in, in Jesus mighty name. And if you would love to join our community, you can have my phone number. You can have my email address. Just DM Healing Life Church. And we'll find a way to connect with you. We'll find a way for you to meet us. Come on our Zoom or even meet us in person if you're in San Diego. And if you know me already, then call me. <laughs> and if you know Pastor Dean, Jeannie, Hannah, Joseph, call us. We want to hear from you. And we promise you that we will be a good prayer warrior for you. And if you need a friend to lean on, we will be there. So join us, Healing Life Church. You can, you can give on our website, healinglifechurch.com, our mobile app on common provision or healing life. Because when you open a door, the spirit of the Lord will be ushered in. Amen. So if you give your gift to us today, God will give you a gift back. When you open a door, the ushering the Holy Spirit will come. And we're going to do part three of teach them how to love. This has been a series I think a lot of people have enjoyed, especially myself. I've seen all the comments from Natalie. Natalie, get your butt on Zoom. We love you. And Pastor Dean, take it away. Oh, my. 
Oh my. I I can't stop crying. I don't understand what you guys are doing to me. <laughs> it's like <laughs> that worship was amazing, Hannah. And I did, I felt the Holy Spirit come, and my glasses are fogging up right now. It's like I'm having a hard time seeing. Judy, do you feel it? Do you feel the love? Well, I'm not crying. I, uh, I feel the love, though, and uh, it's sweet. Thank you both, and thank you, Joseph, for being with us all the way from Pakistan. That's and right. here we are. He's our children's minister. He's doing his children's ministry in Pakistan. We got like yeah. 50 kids over there, and we're feeding them, and teaching them about the Lord. It's so wonderful. God is good. Oh, it's amazing. Well, okay, so we're, you have a good message we're, today. We're, we're charged with teaching them how to love, right? So Jeannie and I were in Israel. We were at the Garden of Gethsemane where the Lord wept blood from tears of blood that he knew he was going to go to the cross. And he asked the Father if there was anything, any way out of that. And the Father just said, do my will. And so he did. And he gave his life for us. He went through it. He could have, he could have bailed any minute, but he didn't. He was cur courageous and strong. And the reason he did that was because he knew that the love of the Father would pour out through him. That when we sacrifice our lives for the right reason, when we advocate for the love of God, the love of God pours out of us, and it heals. It does such amazing and wonderful things. Huh? Okay, so I want to talk with Jeannie about love. Okay, If we're going to teach him how to love, that's what he said to Jeannie when we were at the, the Garden of Gethsemane. He actually, Jeannie heard Those his were voice. His exact words. Yep. And he knows that I like things simple, and that was like... I was like, she heard the voice of God. That's, that's amazing. And it's rare for me, yeah. very rare. But it was in Jerusalem, and it was clear. And, and I felt so humbled, like, how can I do that? How can I teach them how to love? I'm just learning myself. And who are they? I, like, <laughs> my, <laughs> my family, my, you know. So, so we, well, we, we're learning, right? We're learning. We're lear he said he'll, we're loving he'll each teach other. Us. We're lo yeah. we're we're loving our our little group, our our Zoom church. We're loving these children in Pakistan. We're loving his church. We're loving him. Yeah. We're learning. Yeah. We're all learning, you know. And it's a great, absolutely great thing to study and to to be able to go into the scriptures and see the pattern. It's all the way through the path, all the way through the scriptures. He's trying to teach us how to love. He never stops. Like Hannah says, he never stops working at it. Yeah. And we go through our ups and downs and we learn how to forgive our enemies. We learn how to turn the other cheek. We learn how to give, go the extra mile or give the, the, what is it, the, the cloak and then the shirt. I mean, really? <laughs> <laughs> By the time we're done, we're naked. <laughs> you know, so, so it's like, but I think that's what he wants. He wants us to be naked. He wants us to be humble and stripped of everything so that we end up depending on him and finding that his love is the way, the truth, and yeah. life, right? Yeah. Okay, so Jeannie and I are going to have a discussion here. We're going to talk about love. A quick one, because you got a good message. Okay, all right. We want to get through this quick. Okay, so... Big question here, okay? What is love? That's a good one, okay? What is love? If we end up starting at the basics, I, I'm a physician surgeon, so I always like to start at the, the core, the beginning, and then build on knowledge from that core. And, and you know, the Lord said that if you do that, and you build it on the rock of Him and His love, that the, all the adversities of life come and your house still stands because you built your house on the rock. No. Yeah. Okay, so what do you think? What's, what do you think is love? What's love? <laughs> <laughs> Big question. Well, we've been talking about it for weeks. Yeah. Well, we've been talking about it, what, 20 years we've been married. And we're still learning. We are. Yeah. And the, the way that he teaches us to love others more than ourselves is. Amen. Part of it is his example of Pouring sacrifice. Pouring ourselves out for others. That's an important part of life, yeah. you know. Yeah. But there's a limit to it. 
because if you go too far, then you end up draining yourself and then you end up getting angry and resentful, <laughs> which isn't exactly the, 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 the end Loving result you want. Way to go. <laughs> yeah. So take care but, of yourself, you know. That's, yeah. We're discovering, though, the, the depths of his love for us. That's right. And it's really from understanding how he set things up, how he set life up on this planet. You know, yeah. this, this planet is a living organism. It's like a, a being. The, the whole planet is alive. And it's alive because he gave us the DNA and formed all of the life forms that are on it yeah. out of love yeah. to worship him. And to, to thank him, <laughs> we are alive because he's given us life. Yeah. You know, every time I eat, I thank him, you know. Okay, well, so let's, let's uh, just, just for grins, okay, we're going to try to make life, uh, a definition of life that people will kind of appreciate, all right? Yeah, okay. so you ready to get into your scriptures? Yes, okay. Okay, all right. All right. okay. then all right. have fun. All right, thank okay, you. Okay, it's going to be all good. Right. All right, see... She loves me, I can tell, and I love her dearly. Okay, so here I am at home doing a Zoom on love. I mean, who would have thought? <laughs> in order to be able to talk about this, in order to be able to share what I found out about love, what Jeannie and I have found out about love, what we as a group are finding out about love, we have to go to the source of love, the very beginning of all of the things that have happened on this planet started with the Creator, the God Almighty. Science has now disproved Darwin's theory. It was ridiculous that mutations would start and evolve life. Life came because it was orchestrated and coded in a, in a molecular way that is like just now becoming understood the genetic codes of every life form and how they all integrate into one biosphere. I mean, this is a work of love. And if you don't grasp that, if you can't handle that, okay, then look at Jesus. Look at, he's the perfect representation of the Father, of the Creator, the one who gave us this life. He was sent by God. He wasn't just born of the Virgin Mary, okay? He was alive for billions of years. The right hand of God learning the Son of God, the only begotten Son of love, God, He came out of love for us, to help us. And I don't care if you're Muslim or Buddhist or New Age or anything, we're all in the same boat. We're all on the same planet and we're all of the same race. And He came for all of us. So just to begin to understand love, we have to understand that. So I want to share with you just the prerequisite for this talk. And if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ or you don't have an understanding of what I'm saying, bear with me. Hang in there. Okay? I'm hoping by the end of this talk that you'll understand this sermon. They're calling me a preacher now. Give me a break. Okay. So... To learn to love, we must be appreciative, born of, in love with God, and to love God's Son, and ask that what He does has a direct effect on our lives. So, First John is such a great letter. I highly recommend reading it. It's in the Bible, First John. Dear friends, let us love one another, for love comes from God. Everyone who loves has been born of God and knows God. But whoever does not love, love does not know God because God is love. So you see what happened from the very beginning and in the Bible, all the stories, every parable, everything that is written is to teach us how to love. So this is not just a uh, uh, esoteric exercise or something to learn and then forget. This is something that, like Amber says, it requires an open door. 
open your door and learn, learn how to love. So I've, I've thought about this and I got three different kinds of love. Oh, there are many different descriptions of love, but I got three that I want to share with you. Okay. The first one is, and I put this in the form of a question. What is love? Is love a state of being? Yeah. I am in love. Oh, I've been in love. I fell in love with Jeannie. We got married. I still love her. So I am in love. So that's a love that has to do with me. It's I. See the I in there? I am in love. It's a state of being. Yep, it is a state of being. But that's only the beginning, you see, because if it stayed there, it'd become very selfish. And all this self-actualization and meditation and everything is all fine. Go for it. Learn about loving yourself. I mean, if you can't love yourself, you commit suicide, that'd be terrible. Love yourself, fine, okay? But then you progress to number two. Is love an action? Yes, it is. I love you. I give of myself. I serve you. Jesus wrapped the apron around his waist and knelt down and washed his disciples' feet to show them how much he loved them and was willing to serve them. Well, that's serving others. That's a higher form of love. That's when you get out of your own skin and get out and start giving love to others. But then there's the third love. It's a destination. We don't know. We, don't, we haven't even come close to fathoming the love of God. But we can get there if we stick together, if we, if we work together at trying, opening our hearts, opening the door to our hearts and trying. So I'm going to propose that the love of God is a destination. And I'm going to say this as a bottom line kind of guy, okay? It's a fundamental destination. It's a destination where if we all get on board, if we all get into the bus, the school bus, and go to school and learn how to love God, and we learn about the love of God, that we will live forever, that we will not die. Oh, yes, we'll have a death, a physical death. But in spirit, we will rise up again, just like Jesus did on the third day, and we will live forever. And we will experience the ultimate, the love of God. So you see, Jesus was sent to teach us how to love. He didn't do anything wrong. He was murdered because he tweaked the, the powers that be. Oh, this sounds very familiar. Got to be careful about the powers that be. But they aren't the true power. The true, true power is in heaven, safe and secure, in the heart of God. He came, Jesus came, to sacrifice his life for us because he loved us. And he wanted to teach us about the love that the Father has for us. People that have died and gone to heaven, experienced the love of the Father and come back, say, it's just awesome. It is so enveloping and so warm and so comforting and so fulfilling. They didn't want to come back. And Jesus told them, you got to go back and tell them about me. Okay, all right, I'll go back. But they know their destination now, the destination of the Father's love. So he said, oh, this is from Isaiah. I love Isaiah. You got to read the book of Isaiah. It is awesome. Okay, it's all about Jesus. This is what he said about Jesus. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought him peace, brought us peace, was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. And so Jesus, when he came, and he took this on. He said, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. In other words, the love of God is real. 
He died for it, he's giving it to us, and it's real. And it changes the way we look at life. Oh, we still have adversity. I just got a letter from the city. I would not wish that on anybody, but it's okay. I'll handle it. God will be with me. We can, we can go through all of the process, fine. But the peace that passes understanding inside of me, the love of God that's inside of me, the world can't touch it. I've come to that point now in my life. And I pray that for all of you, that we come to that point where the love of God will not be tarnished or interrupted or hurt, no matter what the enemy does. Okay. So I'll picture it as we're on a trip with the destination of being loved by God. And he's still here and he's going to love us during the, the, the transition. But the first thing that we have to do, right, is we have to get into the car. Then we got to trust the driver. Now, Jesus, he built that car and he knows everything about it. And he knows everything about the passengers, everything about you. He doesn't care if you've sinned. He doesn't care if you've had problems in the, pro in the past. He doesn't care if you're holding a big grudge against him. I've met people that, that hate him. He doesn't care. Okay? All he wants you to do is get in the car. Open the door to your heart. Get in the car and see. Give it a test drive, you know? Just see if it's worth being in the car or not. Okay? So he says this. He says, you know, don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in me. Trust in me. Trust in God and trust also in me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So you see, what he did was he created a way, a truth, a life. Oh, and how, how incredibly difficult it's become to stay with him in that car. I mean, there's all kinds of forces tearing us apart as a race, as a culture right now. That's so sad because it's unloving. It's not of God. It's unloving and unkind. And we need to stand against it. And we'll talk about that in a second. But there's some rules of the road. Okay, Jesus said, if you're going to stay in the car, Anyone who loves me will obey my teaching. My Father will love them. We will come to them and make our home with them. In other words, he and Father will be in the car with us. And we're on our way to the destination of the love of God. So <clears throat> these rules of the road are, are pretty clear. And they're thousands of years old. And the race has ignored them for thousands of years. It's just amazing to see how confused we become in that first form of love, that self-love, when we forget about others and we forget about God. It's so silly to be so confused. Believe me, I, as a surgeon, as a trauma surgeon and seeing people die, if you saw that confusion enter into the ICU, You'd have to push it out. I mean, literally make it go to get it out of there before it killed the person because you need clarity of thought and the right heart to take care of people that are dying and save their lives. And that's what Jesus is. Clarity of thought and a heart you would not believe filled with love. So he says, you got to obey my teaching. Well, what's he referring to? Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. I don't even think you'll experience the true love of God. What he's saying is that they're rules of the road. Now, if you go speeding 100 miles an hour, right past a cop on I-5. <laughs> Expect to be pulled over. Expect to be admonished and told you were sinning, right? And then you get a ticket. 
and then they threatened to take your driver's license away. Oh no. I'll tell you a story about that, but maybe some other time. I actually went 110 miles an hour right past a cop. <laughs> well, I had a Corvette and I was just trying it out, you know? Woohoo! <laughs> That was the greatest time of my life. Why, woo, you know, and then that little red light shines in the back. Oh, dear. But he let me go. You know why? Because he knew I was foolish and I was, a, I was just a child. And I was in dad's car. <laughs> and he said, well, if I was a kid and I had my dad's car, I'd probably go 110 too. And I'm letting you go this time, but don't do it again. That's Jesus. That's grace. That's learning. And I've never done that. I mean, I'm really careful driver now. Yeah. So the, the, the point I'm trying to make with this is that the rules of the road are real. And they're there for our own benefit. They're to teach us how to love God and to love each other. And if we don't obey the laws, then all heck breaks loose. And I'm talking like a demonic infestation of delusion and disruption and ultimately destruction and death that could sweep this planet and take us right out. This is no joke. These laws are immutable. They are the laws of love. So let's take a look at some of them, all right? What Jesus was talking about. Ah, rules for loving our Father in heaven. Loving the guy who gave us, the person. You know he's a person? You know he has feelings? You know that he gets upset when people say bad things about him, when he didn't deserve it? He doesn't do bad things. He, in fact, he works all things to the good for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. He's a faithful and just God. And so he says, you shall have no other gods before me. Yes, there are other gods. Oh, there's a God of Buddhism, and there's a God of Shriva, and all, all these spiritual beings have their own kingdoms and principalities, and they think that they're like recruiting, I mean, of all things. And God says, I don't want any of those guys around me, period. I live in heaven, I got my own team, and I don't want them around me, and I don't want you to reference them and put them above me. You can, you know, I was a Buddhist for a while. I felt the presence of Buddha and the spiritual beings there. I mean, okay, fine. But I found Jesus was really the way, the truth, and the life. He was, his love was far greater and far more powerful than any of the other gods. And don't put any of those other gods before me. And some of the media that's going on right now in entertainment where the gods are, are being elevated above the God of heaven, the creator, that's breaking the first commandment. The second commandment is you shall not make for yourself any image in the form of anything in heaven above or earth beneath or on, in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sins of the parents to the third and fourth generation for those who hate me. And we're going to talk about this next week, how to break off curses. Because I have, we have been under the influence of curses. And they're generational. And there is a way to break them through love, through the love of God. And that is what he said. He shows love to a thousand generations for those who love me and keep my commandments. So, so there you go. Do you want to have curses or do you want to have blessings? The love of God brings his blessing. The third thing is you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God or his son, <laughs> or Christians in general, <laughs> for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. In other words, there's a judgment that comes against you if you break the commandments. The commandments of God are immutable. They're the foundation for life on this planet and for learning how to love. So those first three were to learn how to love God. 
Now the next seven, you know, they're 10. So the next seven are how to learn to love the family of God, to learn to love one another. This is a challenge. This is like a test for us. It's like a way to find out if we really do love. Listen to some of those rules. Remember the Sabbath day, take care of yourself, rest, worship God, honor your father and your mother. So, that, and there's the first promise that you may live long in the land your God has given you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not give false testimony against your neighbor, you shall not covet your neighbor's house or anything of your neighbor. Now, I want to focus on you shall not commit adultery for just a second. There is nothing more devastating to love than betrayal. Anything that betrays the love of God, the love for your spouse, the love for uh, our fellow human beings is from the evil one. It's a delusion that you are special and that you can break the commandments and not suffer the consequences of it. It's just, that's just a delusion. The courts of heaven are continually working. And when we come into the courts of heaven without Jesus, terrible things can happen. The good news is that we're forgiven for breaking those commandments. We've all broken them. There's not one of us that isn't a sinner, and myself included. But that's what Jesus said. He said, for those who have the need of a Savior, their love for the Savior is deeper and stronger. So as you come out of the delusion of self-love, and you come into God's love, the love of God, you're forgiven and washed clean. And that's the work of God. That's how the Holy Spirit changes or transforms a person. Don't be afraid of it. Don't be angry and resentful. You're not losing anything that you won't thank God for later. Okay? It's a, really a blessing to change into a child of God. I, I was in the occult for a while. My parents were. It's nothing. Horoscopes and, and soothsaying and fortune telling and all that it's garbage. Just consulting the dead result, results in the blind leading the blind. The love of God is the way out. And his love forgives, washes us clean, and makes us new in him. It's beautiful what he's doing. Absolutely beautiful. Jesus, by the way, didn't just let the Ten Commandments just sit there. He said, okay, if you're really angry with somebody, that's like murder. You're already breaking the commandment. So he made it like a matter of the heart. He said, if, you, if you're looking at, a, at somebody else's wife and you're lusting after her, you're already committing adultery. If you're trying to think of how you're going to outfox the government and, and steal money from other people or whatever, your, your thoughts are already condemning you. And here's the scary part. Every thought, every word you say is being recorded. Not by some computer out in the cyberspace, although that's beginning. It's being recorded in your own heart. Every memory will be brought back to you. Everything you say and do. And thank God that a merciful and loving God gives you forgiveness and grace and washes you clean of it all. You see, he has us in mind. He knows what we're going through. And he knows how to handle it. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves 
pray to me, seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive them. And I will heal their land. That's not a, just a promise. That's the power of Almighty God invoked to change this craziness, this war in Ukraine, this craziness. You want to win over Ukraine? Love them. Help them. Don't try to smush them. China wants to rule the world? Really? You think you can do a better job than God? It's craziness. We're learning our lessons, and I hope we don't learn them the hard way. It's time for us all to pray and to ask God for help. You know, so this is the reality. There are two kinds of love in this world. The love of good, that's God. The love of evil, that's Satan. Angels for the good are angels from God. The Holy Spirit is powerful. He is a powerful spirit. And the demons and the fallen angels, they shake and quiver when he's around. So this is, again, from 1 John. I'm telling you, the Bible is filled with this. Read it with the idea of finding the love of God in it, and it will change your life. This is how we know, this is from 1 John. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by loving God and carrying out his commands. In fact, this is the love for God, to keep his commands. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child, nor is anyone who does not love their brother or sister. And Jesus said, if the world hates you, keep in mind that it hated me first. There's one thing I can tell you about God. He is love. And his children learn how to love. And the opposite, I, I'm speechless. I mean, why would anybody want to learn how to hate? God has his things that he hates. Remember he said, I hate those who hate me. Leave it to God. Let him hate your enemies. You stay focused on Jesus and on the love of God, and he'll take care of you, and he'll take care of your enemies too. That's a promise he will keep. Okay, so two kinds of love. There's the love of God, and there's a love of everything else. <laughs> <clears throat> Pride, greed, envy, lust, wrath, all the seven deadly sins, <laughs> gluttony, uh, 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 slothfulness, all of those seven deadly sins revolve around the love of evil. Pride especially. And when you transform it into the love of God, you fight it effectively with humility. You fight pride with humility. Go think. You wouldn't have to raise up arms. You wouldn't have to have an insurrection. You wouldn't have to have like uh, uh, riots for the BLM movement. All you need is the humility before God that lets God act in your defense and help you. You see, there's a higher power at work here. The love of God. It's our destination. It's the fundamental force for good that will change our circumstances to the good. So in, in Germany in the 30s, they had a movement going on in the culture. I thought this was really instructive because that movement is showing up right now not just in the United States, it's global, but it's spearheaded by nutballs in the United States that have left the Ten Commandments, left the love of God, and are trying to regulate and, and repress the, the freedom to love God. 
It's crazy. And so there were pastors in Germany as Hitler rose to power. And they saw what was going on and they remained silent. And one of them that I really like is Martin Niemöller. I hope I pronounced his name right. This is what he said. First they came for the communists and I did not speak out because I was not a communist. Then they came for the socialists and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, a Christian pastor, and there was no one left to speak for me. That's the end game. The end game is to destroy Christianity and destroy the love of God by a hateful, vengeful, spiritual force that exists on this planet that needs to leave. And if we all wake up and we ask God, he will put them in doomy, gloomy dungeons and we will have a thousand years of peace. But we have to get back to the Ten Commandments. We have to get back to learning how to love. And he will do it. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said it beautifully. Now this quote is sometimes attributed to other people, but I like Dietrich and I'm giving it to him, all right? Silence in the face of evil is evil itself. God will not hold us guiltless. Not to speak is to speak. Not to act is to act. We need to recognize the time that we are in. And we need to go repent, just like 2 Chronicles 7.14 humble ourselves, pray to God, seek him, and turn from our wicked ways to not be silent any longer. <laughs> I saw a young man with, you know, piercings and was trying to be a woman and he had pride written on his shirt. God bless him. I mean, I hope he finds his way. But pride is a sin. I would have been very impressed with him if he had written humility on his shirt. That would have been touching to me. But he didn't. And he's forming a group of activists at UCSD who want to go out and promote this pride. Pride isn't the answer. The love of God is the answer. And pride just sticks it to him. I mean, Jesus does not like, when Jesus sits as the judge, he does not like prideful people because they don't learn how to love. They think they know it all. I was there once. I'm not ever going back to that. Pride in me led to just terrible consequences, and I do not want it. Humility is just part of the answer. Charity, compassion and love, peace, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Does this sound familiar? This sounds like the Holy Spirit, doesn't it? You see, that's the power of God. His power arm, the implementer of his love. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. So this is what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit and Paul. The advocate in heaven, the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my Jesus' name, will teach you how to love. He'll teach you all things, and he will remind you of everything I have said to you. The fruit of this is, the fruit of him, the Holy Spirit helping us, is love. 
joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And if we all have that, then the thousands upon thousands and thousands of regulations and laws will recede because they're not needed. Our budget will balance. Prosperity will come. Inflation will, will recede into functioning culture. The sin is driving us into a dysfunctional culture. And to repent of that is simple. Open the door, like Amber said, open the door. So here's, here's a prayer that Paul made for love. For this reason, for the love of God, I kneel before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you <clears throat> with power through his Holy Spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, the love of God, may have power together with all of the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is this love of God in Christ. And to know this love of God that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God and his wisdom. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Paul. What a man, a man of God. And he did such a great job of helping people fall in love with God and to have Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life, become their Lord, become their Savior, become their friend, to teach them. He is the great teacher, the great rabbi. And he will teach you how to love. And if you don't know Jesus, just open your heart to him. Just say this word, Jesus, come into my heart. Help me to live a new life with you. Teach me how to love, and I will follow you all the days of my life. Just say that. I didn't have to say anything. I was just crying out. I went, Jesus, help me, help. If there's anybody upstairs listening to this, help. And I was ready to commit suicide. That was terrible. And he came. He will come to you, and he will teach us all how to love. Love God and love each other. That's his mission. Okay? So may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with, the, with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And my prayer to you is simple. Thank you, Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you safe. May the Lord make his face and his Holy Spirit shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you his peace. And may that peace spread from you into your family, into your community, into your country, and into your world. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, sweetheart. Teach them how to love. Okay. All right, well, I hope this helped you. I'll pray with you now. Just, Lord, we ask that this time, this moment, this recording, doesn't die, but live and proclaim your goodness. Let this be shared and given so that others may know how much you love them and how much you're 
how wide your door is open to your car so that they can get in and you can take the wheel. In the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. All right, Amber. I'm done. <laughs>